This video will cover the topic sine fraction subtraction involving a double negative. In this video, we'll be learning how to subtract two sine fractions. An important concept to keep in mind is double negatives. This occurs when an expression asks us to subtract a negative number. For example, if we were asked to evaluate six minus negative two, here we're subtracting a negative number. We should keep in mind that this is the same as adding a positive number. Six minus negative two is the same as six plus two. Remembering this will be very useful when we apply it to fractions. Let's try an example of sine fraction subtraction involving a double negative. Suppose we're asked to evaluate negative two fifths minus negative nine eighths. Since we're subtracting a negative number, can we change that to addition? We certainly can. And now that we've taken care of this minus a negative, we can focus on adding these two fractions. First, we should check to see if the denominators are the same. However, five is definitely not equal to eight, so we can't add these until they have a common denominator. The best common denominator is the least common multiple of five and eight, meaning the smallest number that both five and eight can multiply into evenly. In this case, the least common multiple is five times eight, which is 40. Both five and eight multiply into 40, and there are no smaller numbers that five and eight can both multiply into. To change this denominator to equal 40, we'll need to multiply it by eight, and to change this denominator to 40, we'll need to multiply it by five. Are you sure we can just multiply the denominator by a number? Doesn't that change the value of the fraction? Good observation. When we multiply just the denominators by numbers, we're actually changing the values of the fraction. To fix this, we can also multiply the numerators by that same number. So with our first fraction, since we multiply the denominator by eight, we should also multiply the numerator by eight. And with our second fraction, since we multiply the denominator by five, we should also multiply the numerator by five. In this way, we've really multiplied our first fraction by eight over eight, which is one, We've multiplied our second fraction by five over five, which is one. So since they've both just been multiplied by one, they haven't changed their value. They'll just be written with different numbers. And so now, when we multiply all that out, our fractions are negative 16 fortieths plus 45 fortieths. Now that our two fractions have the same denominator, we can finally add them by keeping the same denominator and adding the numerators. In this case, negative 16 plus 45, which equals 29 fortieths. Are we done? Not quite. Our last step is to check to see if this fraction can be simplified at all. To do this, we need to find if there are any numbers that multiply into both 29 and 40. One way to do this is to find the prime factorization of both of these numbers. 29 is a prime number. No numbers multiply into it, so its prime factorization is just 29. 40 is the product of two and 20. 20 is the product of two and 10. And 10 is the product of two and five. All these prime numbers make up the prime factorization of 40. Since 40 and 29 don't share any of these prime factors, we know that they have no common factors, meaning our fraction cannot be simplified any further. So we've arrived at our final answer, 29 fortieths. So when we subtract a negative fraction, that's the same as adding a positive fraction. We add fractions by rewriting them with a common denominator and then adding the numerators together while keeping that same denominator. The final step is to check if the fraction can be simplified. Exactly.